Backpack and intermediate cooling to take some of the extra workload and cool them down a little bit more. as if they're up on the rim, but uh, not yet able to get over to the position where they can sit, see into the crater. Now, it begins to sound like it, the whole area must be strewn with boulders, Neil, that they're working their way around. I, uh, I agree with you, and I suspect that that's, uh, that's the case. But I notice Mitchell won't, Mitchell won't part with the Met. He doesn't want to leave it behind. <laughs> well, he said they need all the tools. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh... I don't have to be pretty, uh, pretty careful about getting uh, too close to the, uh, the sides of that crater, too. To hold the uh, vent steady. It's, uh, soft. The cart steady as, as they're going uh, through this boulder field and round to uh, the rim of Cold Crater. Well, that's something that comes up, you know. Suppose uh, they do slip. Suppose they yeah. fall down. Uh, that's right. Well, you, you heard that uh, Al did slip once and had to get uh, yeah. his help to get up. But if they slip on the slope, it's a somewhat Bad. different matter, isn't it? Bad news. Yeah. And, uh, they do carry a 100-foot rope or tether with them. but they are evidently haven't found the, uh, the rim yet. Yes, looking at uh, the boulder field uh, close to the rim, you can see where they would be on uh, something that appears to be where they're level, uh, and yet not know exactly the direction to go in to get to the, uh, the edge of the crater. I noticed that uh, it's difficult to determine just exactly what uh, the vertical uh, is due to the low gravity there and the, and the hills in the area. And it's also difficult to tell just what it is horizontal. So uh, in a case where they're up in the top with slopes probably less than five degrees, they really have some difficulty in, in uh, figuring out just which direction is uphill. And it, it occurred to me, Neil, that some of our listeners may be wondering if they uh, might are apt to lose track of the whim. Frank, let's get this description uh, from Alan Ed at the top of the rim there. Uh, Roger, Al.
dredging documented samples. Both here. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let me say, Houston, that most of these boulders are the uh, same brownish gray that we found, but we see one uh, that is definitely almost white in color, a very definite difference in color, which was that is definitely almost white in color, a very definite difference in color, which we'll document. We notice uh, that uh, beneath this dark brown regular, there is a uh, very light brown layer, and uh, I think we'll get uh, a core tube right here to uh, show that. As a matter of fact, I think I'll do that right now. Uh, Roger, Al, and uh, your information, uh, we won't be doing the uh, polymetric experiment. Uh, that's firm. You can delete that one. One more experiment being dropped as they begin to run short on time. Neil, it occurred to me that some of our listeners may be wondering if uh, they're apt to lose sight of the limb, but I... I suspect they could always follow their footsteps back. There, there's not too many other ones up there, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, uh, Frank. Uh, uh, the, the terrain is so rolling that uh, it wouldn't at all be surprising to uh, find that you, you did lose sight of the lamb. It's very much uh, like being in, uh, uh, swimming in, in the ocean with uh, uh, some maybe 10 to 15 foot swells. You, when you get uh, down at the bottom of the swells, it's pretty difficult to see very far. Uh, Roger, Al, and uh, Ed, uh, need an opinion. Uh, do you uh, think you'd uh, be able to uh, deploy and uh, take the uh, second and last uh, LPM reading at this location? Yeah, we can take it at this location. Uh, what I have on the board here to perform at, uh, I guess we'll call it C prime, is uh, sample, and uh, I guess you already got a pan. I thought somebody did, and uh, the LPM then. By dropping the polymetric experiment, they've saved about 15 minutes okay. on their timeline. Neil, you raised a really interesting point if we can get to it in between the air to ground here. Very good. The difficulty in finding your way and knowing uh, heights because of the one-sixth gravity and also the tricks that the lunar lighting plays on you. Yes, uh, we, uh, we found that the vertical and the horizontal were about five times clearer than they are here on Earth. Going into 7 p.m. and 15 minutes into the second EVA and run walk. How much time is left now? How much time is left before they have to get back to the left? Well, it was with, with the original yeah, half hour extension, extension, Frank, it was four hours, 15 minutes, but they will. They then extended that a half an hour to four hours, 45 minutes, if I'm reading Fred Hayes correctly. But they've, they've used yeah, up that extension. I believe so. Way. That's why they're dropping some of the experiments like this parliamentary experiment. But they've got a long way to go and a large workload, if I make it right, Neil. Yes, they certainly do, but uh, then there's the uh, good news that it's all downhill from here. Yes. 5-2 on the oxygen, and I'm in the medium flow, and I'm comfortable. No flag. So I'm moving 3-7-5. I'm 4-8 on oxygen. I'm now in mid flow, having just shifted, and uh, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Okay, LPM deploy. Neil, I noticed earlier Ed Mitchell said that the uh, ejecta they're seeing in the uh, rubble is not at all like the Nevada test site. So evidently they're encountering some, uh, some differences on the moon from what they have practiced on here on Earth. How was your simulation? Did you find it pretty much uh, the same as Hawaii and some of the other fields that you... No, I guess uh, uh, our observations were that it was somewhat, somewhat different from anything we'd ever seen on Earth. and. Uh, Although, uh, some of the... Uh, 
some of the geometry was the same, there were enough differences in the nature of the surface and the material there that you really couldn't identify it with things we'd seen here on Earth. Shepard reports taking core sample. Uh, Roger, I'll uh, understand you got down to another uh, layer that uh, looked white below the uh, top band. I'm sure you thought to get that core tube. It's too granular. Most of the material came out of the tube. I'll just uh, scoop a couple of samples uh, and bag it of the, uh, of the two top layers. That indeed is uh, white rock. It really will be different than anything we've seen before on any of samples that had been brought back from the previous flights. The old man of 47, Frank, uh, Ed's doing pretty well. I mean, Al's doing pretty well. Well, he used to spend a lot of time on the uh, track over at, uh, at the Manned Spacecraft Center. I mean, almost every noon you'd see him. Neil, you saw him over there every noon, didn't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mitchell's working with the LPM, the Lunar Portable Magnetometer, measuring, measuring on the moon. They've apparently stopped short of the rim of cone up here, are somewhere in this boulder area, and will not be able to reach the rim, will not have the time to get there before turning around. So we've gone past, that's uh, 25 feet long. That's big stuff. Hayes is really doing a great job today, isn't he, Neil? He's very uh, right on top of everything, the capsule yes. communicator. Yes, uh, Fred has uh, a lot of experience having uh, worked with the lunar module early in the program and being uh, a backup uh, lunar pilot on my flight, and then his, uh, he was, of course, the lunar module pilot on 13, so he's very well qualified to, to help him uh, in every way from the ground. be living vicariously to us since 13 wasn't able to land he uh, studied sure this very right. terrain very many times I'm sure I'm sure he has I'm just like me I'm, I know he's uh, envying them their, their experience and their view that they, uh, they have right now on the, up there on the rim of Cone Crater well, apparently we're not going to be able to push any rocks down the slope today. No. X, 4.9, Y, 4.9. What we're hearing off the uh, data from the magnetometer experiment I gather right now. Right, he's got to read it off three times, Frank, in different uh, directions uh, to get a stable reading of the field of strengths up there. 7.5, and it's still going up. Each flight being the most complicated and dangerous to date. 
And that's really not a trite, uh, trite way of putting it because uh, certainly this one is uh, built on 12 and 11. Each one is a step, and uh, it's hard to uh, it's hard to know where we'll be able to to go with it. Uh, it we've certainly extended it uh, on every flight.